Welcome to the Biochem Seria episode entitled Polysaccharides. This is an episode of the playlist on chemistry of carbohydrates, which is linked above. Feel free to click above and visit the playlist to view the other episodes on this topic. As a rule of thumb, polysaccharides contain more than 10 monosaccharide units, whereas oligosaccharides contain 3 to 10 monosaccharide units, but the precise cutoff varies somewhat according to convention. Polysaccharides are ubiquitous in nature. They can be classified into three separate groups, based on their different functions. These are First, the structural polysaccharides. They provide mechanical stability to cells, organs, and organisms. On the other hand, water-binding polysaccharides are strongly hydrated and prevent cells and tissues from drying out. Finally, reserve polysaccharide service carbohydrate stores, that release monosaccharides as required. Due to their polymeric nature, reserve carbohydrates are osmotically less active, and they can, therefore, be stored in large quantities within the cell. To continue, polysaccharides that are formed from only one type of monosaccharides, are called homopolysaccharides, or homoglycans, while those formed from different sugar constituents, are called heteropolysaccharides, also sometimes referred to as heteroglycans. Both forms can exist as either linear or branched chains. What is shown here is a section of a glycogen, which is an example of a branched homopolysaccharide, or homoglycan. Please take note of the repeating disaccharide, it is only of one type, that of alpha-O-glycosidic bond-linked glucose residues. The main chain is composed of repeating alpha-1-4-linked glosize residues. The branching points, on the other hand, as is shown here, are linked instead by alpha-1-6-linked glucose residues. In contrast, the linear heteroglycan murin, shown here, is a structural polysaccharide that stabilizes the cell walls of bacteria. It has a more complex structure. Only a short segment of this thread-like molecule is illustrated here. In murin, two different components, both beta-14 linked, alternate with each other. These two components are N-acetylglucosamine, and N-acetylmuraminic acid, a lactic acid ether of N-acetylglucosamine. Let us now look at several biomedically important polysaccharides. The first is glycogen. We have, in a way, already discussed the basic structure of this polysaccharide. Glycogen, as we saw in a previous slide, is a multibranched polysaccharide of glucose, that serves as a form of energy storage in animals, fungi, and bacteria. Additionally, the formation and breakdown of glycogen are subject to complex regulation by hormones and other factors. On the average, every 8th to 10th residue carries, via an alpha-1-6 bond, another 1-4-link chain of glucose residues. This gives rise to branched, tree-like structures, which in animal glycogen, are covalently bound to a protein called glycogenin. Starch, a reserve polysaccharide widely distributed in plants, is the most important carbohydrate in the human diet. In plants, starch is present in the chloroplasts in leaves, as well as in fruits, seeds and tubers. Starch is composed of two components. The first is amylose which comprises around 20% of starch. Amylose consists of unbranched alpha-1-4 linked chains of approximately 200-300 to 300 glucose residues. Do the alpha configuration at C1, these chains form a helix with 6 to 8 residues per turn. The blue coloring that soluble starch takes on when iodine is added is caused by the presence of these helices, the iodine atoms form chains inside the amylose helix. The second component, which is more common, comprising 80% of starch, is amylopectin. Unlike amylose, amylopectin, which is practically insoluble, is branched. On average, 1 in 20 to 25 glucose residues is linked to another chain via an alpha-1-6 bond. This leads to an extended tree-like structure, which, like amylose, contains only one anomerico group, a reducing end. Amylopectin molecules can contain hundreds of thousands of glucose residues. Cellulose, a linear homoglycan of beta-1-4 linked glucose residues, is the most abundant organic substance in nature. Almost half of the total biomass consists of cellulose. Some 40-50% to 50 of plant cell walls are formed by cellulose. Cellulose molecules can contain more than 104 glucose residues and can reach lengths of 6-8 to 8 micrometers. Naturally occurring cellulose is extremely mechanically stable, and is highly resistant to chemical and enzymatic hydrolysis. These properties are due to the conformation of the molecules and their supramolecular organization. The unbranched beta-1-4 linkage results in linear chains that are stabilized by hydrogen bonds within the chain and between neighboring chains. 
Thus, in the higher animals, including humans, because they lack the enzymes that can break down the beta-1-4 glycosidic bonds of cellulose, cellulose is indigestible. But they serve an important role of providing roughage. Many herbivores, however, exemplified by the ruminants, have symbiotic unicellular organisms in their digestive tracts that break down cellulose and make it digestible by the host. Next is chitin. Chitin, a long-chain homopolymer from beta-1-4 linked in acetylglucosamine residues, is the most important structural substance in insect and crustacean shells. Specifically, it is a primary component of cell walls in fungi, the exoskeletons of arthropods, such as crustaceans and insects, the radulae of mollusks, cephalopod beaks, and the scales of fish and amphibians. Thus, it is considered the most common animal polysaccharide. To close, this is a summary of the most biomedically important polysaccharides. Some are classified as homopolysaccharides, composed of only one monosaccharide. Others, on the other hand, are heteropolysaccharides, with two monosaccharides. Please take note of the type of glycosidic linkage between the components and the location of the branching points, if applicable. This concludes this episode of the Biochem Seria series of this topic. Feel free to watch the other Biochem Seria episodes of this lecture as linked on the next screen, and in the description below. Please subscribe to our channel, the Biochem Seria channel, click on the notification bell button, and be notified of new videos to be uploaded. Content will be added regularly.